Hong Kong is cleaning up a day after protesters stormed and vandalized the city's legislative council building. China wants a criminal investigation into the violence. Beijing's Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office has condemned the protesters' actions as seriously illegal, adding strong support for Hong Kong's government and police. Now, anger spilled over as Hong Kong marked 22 years since the city was handed over from British rule to China. Hardline protesters breached the LegCo building, flooding into the debating chamber. The situation was allowed to continue for hours before police charged into the building shortly after midnight to regain control. Now, in an emergency news conference in the early hours of the morning, Chief Executive Carrie Lam denounced what she described as the extreme use of violence. She insisted she had not failed to respond to their demands to kill an extradition bill that would allow suspects to be sent to mainland China. It is not true to say that the government has not responded. Uh, we have not responded to every demand asked because of uh, good reasons. The bill will expire or the bill will die in July 2020 when the current electrical term expires. That is a very positive response to the demands that we have put. Let's go to Roland Lim live in Hong Kong. Roland, the city's police watchdog says they'll be launching a study into police actions during the protests. So tell us more about that. Yeah. Um, the IPCC says that to date they have received 110 complaints regarding the protest actions between the 9th of June to the 1st of July. That was yesterday. And because of the widespread complaints against the police, the IPCC is doing a rare thing. They are going to be initiating a study, essentially a report, uh, in, in gathering uh, these complaints together. Uh, they are going to be getting their, uh, rolling up their sleeves, getting their hands dirty, and actually conducting an investigation so as to get a clearer picture on the ground, not just from the police side of things, but also from the public side of things. So they are calling on the public to come forward as witnesses, uh, as well as providing video footage of uh, various abusers that the public has uh, lobbied against uh, the police during uh, the clearing up action, specifically uh, the focus will be on the June 12 protest when uh, the police carried out uh, the clearance action uh, around the LegCo building when tens of thousands surrounded it. Uh, 150 tear gas as well as rubber bullets were fired by police. Uh, police defended their action saying that, uh, that they were, protesters were throwing bricks and projectiles at them. But at the same time, there have been uh, news footage as well as eyewitness accounts of how police had indiscriminately fired uh, these rubber bullets and tear gas at unarmed protesters. So uh, the police, of course, under heavy criticisms for those actions. And that's why the IPCC is coming up with a study with the aim of coming up or recommendations of policies towards a future a review, really, of uh, policing policies and crowd handling uh, uh, strategies uh, that might be that will come under review with this IPCC uh, report. It's due in six months' time. At the same time, uh, Chairman of the IPCC, Anthony Liu, uh, Neo, he is a former Queen's Counsel and former Chairman of the Security and Futures Commission. He also defended the independence of the council itself, despite criticisms that uh, it had lacked powers and the fact that the council itself was nominated or elected by the chief executive and her administration. Have a listen. As to whether or not our study uh, will actually be accepted by the general community, including journalists, association, human rights groups, and so on, uh, I think uh, you'll have to wait until we publish it. I mean, as everybody knows, in fact, the test of every pudding is in the eating. So uh, you'll have to see uh, how good this pudding is. So the uh, protesters themselves, the extradition bill protesters themselves, 
have long been calling for an independent public inquiry headed by a judge. Uh, they are calling for this because a public inquiry has more powers. For example, it can subpoena witnesses as well as these witnesses protected uh, under anonymity when testifying uh, for or against the police themselves. And also the uh, public hearing would also allow for a wider comprehensive review of not just policing system but also uh, the protesters themselves, their actions, their motivations and how uh, such an occurrence would likely be stopped in the future. All right, many thanks for that. Roland Lim speaking to us from Hong Kong. Well, after last night's violence, police have cleared roads near the heart of Hong Kong, paving the way for business to return to normal. But the legislature will remain closed for two weeks. Wei Du was there earlier. The cleanup at the Legislative Council continues, and right now the police is treating this as a crime scene. That's why they've cordoned off this entire complex, so we have a lot less access to the building. The police also strictly controls who goes in and who comes back out. Uh, some of the legislators have told us that they were each given 10 minutes to go to their office to survey the damage, but they couldn't stay inside. That's why a lot of them are uh, hanging outside. In including the pro-democracy legislators yesterday who pleaded with the protesters not to storm the legislative council. The students probably have become unnecessarily militant, but then you have to understand that the desperation behind the problems they've raised have become so deeply rooted in Hong Kong. I'm fairly confident that the majority of Hong Kong people can see through this uh, political facade uh, being put up by Kerry Lam. Will there be further protests? Uh, how soon? How big? Uh, the, the, we, the, the, we'll see. We, we don't know yet. Uh, but then the, I, I can, the, I'm convinced that uh, this is a, uh, an ongoing fight. Hong Kong people will not just uh, take it lying down. At the same time, this area outside the Legislative Council has become a theater for different groups to come here and make themselves heard. Earlier, a very small pro-government group turned up to voice their support for Chief Executive Carrie Lam and also calls on the government to punish the protesters yesterday. But out on the streets, Hong Kongers actually have pretty mixed feelings. If you have to make them listen somehow, you have to show them some like violence, a little violence. It wasn't that much, it was just like some violence. From our limited sample, it appears that younger people are a lot more tolerant towards uh, what happened to at Legislative Council last night. They say even though they don't endorse violence, that they could understand why the protesters did what they did. And uh, perhaps more importantly, uh, from our interviews, no one uh, is saying that the government did a good job at handling this situation. And that would probably once again come back to haunt Chief Executive Carrie Lam in the future.